continuing this theme of the proximity of God. The proximity of God through the divine energy of God, through his working in the universe. In him we live, move and have our being. And just like the rays of the sun, in some way are direct, in fact in all ways are a direct participation in the sun, a real union with the sun. So the Orthodox Church, following the analogy here of St. Gregory Palamas, believe that we truly make contact with God through his divine grace, through grace, which is God himself. God made available to us as much as we are able to receive in his divine energies or outworkings. God unknowable in his essence, if you like, in the very ball of fire that is the sun, the Helios. We can't access that. We'll be burnt to a crisp. It's beyond us. But we can experience God and are called to experience God through the rays of his outworking, shining out in all of creation, in every pore of our being, in every breath. That's why the saints, the church fathers say, we must unite prayer, the name of Jesus, to our breath. Prayer must become as essential to us as breath itself because everything is a grace of, from God. These are two very good books. But, um, Elder Arseniy Papacioc, I think you pronounce that. He's from Romanian. He died and lived in the 1900s in Romania, as I say. This book here is Aphorisms of His. Very, very beautiful. Very simple. I love these books presently. Just books that you can just dip into on a particular theme and read a few lines and then head off into prayer. Beautiful book. Nineteen dollars. His section on the liturgy is particularly awesome. He talks about how the liturgy is heaven itself. It's not a sign of heaven. It's not a symbol of heaven. It is heaven itself because we don't have communion with a bit of bread on a metal dish, he says. We have, it is God himself there, Christ, all of Christ and this is a work of God completed by man in the priest. And it's the words of God himself, Christ, uses the priest, gives the priest his voice, his words, his actions to bring God down, to unite heaven and earth. The liturgy is heaven itself. And I would argue that in the West we've largely lost that. And I think that's why as a Roman Catholic monk I was so often, to be brutally honest, often bored in daily Mass. It was quite a dry experience. As I have to say, I do honestly pine for the, for the divine liturgy. Whether it's just once or twice a week, or if I'm at a monastery and it's it's more times, one really looks forward to it. And one really sees that it's the epicenter of our spiritual life. As we receive God into our into our being. And Elder Papa Chok here is gonna say, Well, look, this shows you the supreme vocation of, of man, even above the angels that God became man and unites himself with man. It's a supreme mystery. And so when called to such high things, how can we 
consign ourselves to hell by our sinful choices? He asks. Modern man is blinded to this sublime vocation that he's invited to. Called to. And I do believe that divine worship is meant to be sweet, serene, sublime, transcendent, a mystery, bringing us directly in contact with God in his energies and not merely a sign or a symbol. If this is lost, prayer and worship become dry or reduced merely to the emotional what I maybe see, perhaps to an extent, at the charismatic revival meetings that are ever popular, with the youth especially. But the ancient church gave us this ancient liturgy, where God is highly tangible, where one can make contact with the angels, with the saints, with all of heaven, with Jesus Christ, and commune with him through the precious bread and wine, which are transformed, just as we are called to be transformed. I read something, you know, yesterday, that transfiguration, coming from the, the Greek, the Greeks only have one word, it's transfiguration is trans formation transformation is transfiguration they don't distinguish those two terms metamorphosis this is our calling to be metamorphosized anyway forgive me just some ideas which church is allowing you is enabling you, is helping you, is presenting you a way to be metamorphosized, to become radiant with God's divine light, God's divine grace, which is God, to become filled and dressed in Christ. Those who've put on, those who've been baptized into Christ have become clothed in Christ, become one with Christ become participants in God's divine nature. Where do you see this lived out? I'll leave it there, forgive me.